welcome to West Country Wanderings and a happy New Year's Eve to you. You might be watching this now in 2023. So a happy New Year to you as well. More about that in the bit on my little New Year's Eve video. I'm here in the little village of Chalford, just to the east of the town of Stroud in the southern part of the Cotswolds. You may be familiar with this location because we've been here before. In front of me here is the Thames and Severn Canal. And of course, we've seen that on many, many occasions on my canal series here on West Country Wanderings. But this isn't a canal series today. We're going to take two little short circular walks from this location. One to a hamlet of Chalford called Browns Hill, which has a most unusual church or chapel. And we'll have a little explore around that and the views from that. And then after that, we'll be going into the centre of Chalf, we'll be filming a little bit around there to tell you the story of the donkeys and the history all about that too. So I hope you can join me here on West Country Wanderings for another explore here on New Year's Eve. I'm now at St Mary of the Angels in Browns Hill and it's looked after by the National Churches Trust. In fact, it's unique in amongst their collection of some 60 odd buildings that have now fallen out of regular church use. This one is unique because it's the youngest church that they look after. And it's also the only Roman Catholic church that they look after too. It also has a very, very interesting story. Now the Church of St Mary of the Angels here in Brownsville is all down to one senior architect that designed many, many cathedrals and two Spencer sisters that are relocated to this part of Gloucestershire after the First World War. I'll tell you more about their lives because it's an important part of the history of why this church was built in this location here. Now the Spinster sisters were called Bertha Kessler and Kathleen Hudson. I'm not sure why they had different surnames, but they did. But they did a lot of work in the first aid auxiliary forces during the First World War. That, of course, ended in 19, 1918. But by 1920, they'd actually ended up in a psychiatric wards because of the trauma that they had seen on the battlefields of World War I. Following release from the psychiatric wards, they had a bit of a conversion. In fact, they became very, very spiritual and they bought a house nearby here. I'll tell you more about that and we'll see if we can find it later in the video. Because of the horrors they'd seen during the First World War, they wanted to relocate to somewhere that was very, very pastoral, very reminiscent of the English countryside. As we can see here, completely unspoiled, beautiful part of the Cotswolds. Their spirituality led them to become members of the Catholic faith and they bought a nearby place called Templewood. I think then it was called Tanglewood, and it was here in Brownsville. I'll see if we can uh, find that shortly, as I say, and not making any promises. But they decided to also create a stamp and create a spiritual home here in this part of Western Chalford. And they wanted to do that by building a chapel or a church, but they just didn't want to go and do any old chapel. No, they decided to get the very best. In 1930, they contacted one W.D. Corot. By then, already quite well into his early retirement from architecting and designing big fabulous cathedrals and other buildings throughout the United Kingdom. He was a very well respected architect and he came here to Brownsville to see what he could do. And his plan was to have something on a 
almost like a, an alpine concept. And we've seen that previously at the church at Selsley, which is only a few miles just the other side of the town of Stroud, where the Marling family had a huge church built in the a Swiss chalet style. It took seven years for this chapel to be built, but it wasn't just the structure of the stonework that was important, it was also the fantastic stained glass. Now unfortunately the church is closed today, you have to contact the office of the, the charity to, to get in here and because I've done this late minutes because of the beauty of the sunshine I want to do something close today, it's, when I'm filming this the air office is closed because of the Christmas period but I hope to kind of return to this when I'm back in the Chalford area again to show you inside. But take it from me, this has some stunning stained glass inside it. Now the stained glass, you can just see the outside of it somewhere around there, sorry the sun's in my eyes, was actually designed by one Douglas Strachan from Scotland, a very well renowned stained glass designer. And these are really, really unique and moving designs here, set here amongst the hills of the Cotswolds. Now as well as the chapel being here, a Christian Roman Catholic community started to set up. In fact, there is still a convent, and I'll see if I can get a shot of that, insert that run around, still here, just down the road from this chapel. But obviously the chapel is now, doesn't hold regular services here anymore. There was also a monastery nearby. And if you have a look at the, the graveyard of this chapel here, you can see something really interesting. So behind me here are some of the graves, that the fathers, and the brothers that were at the mo local monastery here. You have Father Crawley, Father Cater, Father Hessen, and Father John Kelly. But that's not all that we have here in the churchyard. Yes, here are the graves of Mother Catherine Katie Hudson, and over there, Mother Margaret Bertha Kessler. So after all their charitable works during the First World War and helping to build this magnificent church or chapel here in Brownshill, they are laid to rest in the churchyard here amongst the nuns and monks from the convent and the monastery here. What we're going to do now is continue our journey looking at other parts of Chalford and telling you more of the story about the donkeys that once serviced this incredible village here. Now I've just had the most enormous bit of good fortune just as I was leaving here. The caretaker for the building came up and they check on it once a day and they allowed me in. I had a look around and managed to get some photographs of the stained glass that was built by Douglas Strachan and that magnificent interior too. Just got a shot, set the tripod up and uh, managed to do that before the building was locked up again, so I feel very, very privileged. While I was inside the building, there's a little card there which tells you a little bit more about the history that isn't actually, that I couldn't find on the internet. And one of the interesting things was that uh, the Templewood or Tanglewood building, the community, the Christian community, Roman Catholic Christian community here, was actually visited by both Mother Teresa of Calcutta. Yes, that's, that's just blown my mind, that fact. Here, this tiny little corner of the Cotswolds, Mother Teresa of Calcutta arrived. I'm not sure when, perhaps in the 50s or 60s. And also one squadron leader, Douglas Bader, of course, from the uh, Second World War, the one that overcame losing his leg. That's an amazing thing to, to know that they came here to this corner. I do know because I did used to go to the Roman Catholic Church in Stroud many, many years ago. And I remember that this church here was serviced as a satellite church and they did hold regular services, certainly right through the 1970s and possibly into the 1980s. And I think it fell out of use around 1990. But as I say, the convent nearby, as I say, I'll insert a photo of that, is still in very much in use. And I'll see if I can find the actual building of Tanglewood too.
So now we come a little bit further to the east, towards the centre of the village of Chalford. Still got the Thames and Severn Canal behind me here. Just got me thinking about the new year. So there's only a few more hours of 2022 left and it's been a very, very difficult year for many. I hope you've managed to get through it relatively unscathed. But of course, as we journey through life, it's always a learning curve, isn't it? All the obstacles that we come across and the tragedies and the heartbreaks, they can make us learn new things and be able to negotiate them. I'm certainly going to be doing that in 2023 as West Country Wanderings continues here on YouTube. Hope going to be enjoying the content. I've got lots of exciting projects coming up. I hope you have a fantastic New Year's Day tomorrow. We're going to continue our journey right into the heart of the village. I'm going to be able to tell you the story of the donkeys. Now behind me here is Chalford Tabernacle's Sunday School Rooms. It looks like peering through the windows that this hasn't been used for many, many years, sadly, but it's still structurally sound from what I can see. And it's next to Chalford Tabernacle as well. It got me thinking about all of the paths. Now, there's some 23 kilometers of paths that connect all of the little the cottages here in Chalford, should I say. It got me thinking about going up those paths and back down and then back up again. It's a bit like a game of snakes and ladders. It's also a bit like living life with the obstacles and the highs and unfortunately the lows that we experience as we go through life. Just tell you a little bit about the donkeys that were once here. Now the footpaths that interconnect Charlford obviously predate the motor car. They go back much further in time than that and the reason they were here was to provide an access route from the cottages to the mills that lie down in the valley that use the river Froome as a source of water to power the water mills. That's how Chalford grew, that's how the cottages sprang up. It was the workforce that worked in the mills. But having those paths is really, really difficult. If you think about shopping yourselves, pop along to your local supermarket and then you'll probably get some groceries and you'll take them out probably out of the boot of your car or the delivery van and you can take them into your front door. That's a lot more difficult here in Chalford. So the resourceful villagers here in Chalford used donkeys to transport groceries into their cottages and also coal to provide heat for their homes too. The donkey service led to the village being known as Nedyshire. I don't remember that, but it's certainly in the notes that I've uh, read. If anybody got any recollection of Chalford being called Nedyshire, please drop a comment below. And the donkey service continued right up until the 1930s. I'm not sure why it should stop in the 1930s because these roads are very very difficult to navigate even today and with the winter that we had just a week ago with the ice and snow I certainly wouldn't want to be driving around Chalford's roads short of having a 4x4. There was a revival of the service I think it was around 2008 from Chalford Community Shop and they had a couple of donkeys, and I'll put their names in below, and they provided a service. I'll put an in clip that's on YouTube now, just to show you can watch the full thing. I'll put 
a link to that video in the description of today's video showing the donkeys going up and down the paths here in Chalford. Sadly, it looks like that service discontinued in 2015. I'm not sure why that was, but I'm sure it provided a most welcome service to deliver groceries right here in Chalford in Gloucestershire. Hope you've enjoyed this tour here in Chalford, looking at that spectacular little chapel at Branser with its history and also the tale of the donkeys. I'd like to wish all of you a very, very happy new year and a happy, healthy and prosperous 2023. If you're deciding to do any New Year's resolutions for 2023, you could drop a comment below, either on YouTube or over on my Facebook page, West Country Wanderings. Love to hear from you there. Not sure what I'm going to be doing. Probably going to be doing things more mindfully. What I mean by that is when I'm doing any type of activity, maybe it's cooking or just when I'm out walking, just doing things perhaps a little bit more slower and taking more notice of the little details in our life. Well, I'd love to hear from you to see you know, what your little resolution, whether it's going to be difficult giving up chocolate, I would find that a particularly difficult one to do. Whatever it is, great success with your New Year's resolution. Happy New Year. All the best and take care of yourselves. Hope to see you on West Country Wanderings again very soon. Cheers now. Goodbye.